My name is Tyler Bragginson, and I'm an Applications Manager for Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create partial length or unique shaped edge flanges with SOLIDWORKS sheet metal. On this model, you can see I have a unique edge flange. It's not the complete length of the side edge, which means we can't use a standard edge flange command to create it. There's two ways we can go about creating this profile. The most commonly done way is what I've completed here. You can see I started off with a base flange and two edge flanges and added some mounting holes in the back. That's pretty basic stuff. I'll assume you know how to do that. Next though, I added my edge flange to begin the custom shape. If I edit this, you can see that a standard edge flange command just asks you to specify an edge that you want to add the flange to and then give it a flange length. You also have some position settings. Using the default parameters though, you're always going to be left with a rectangular profile that is the complete length of the edge you selected. To get the unique shape we're looking for, I then had to create a sketch that actually cuts away the material that I don't want for this particular flange, leaving me with the shape that I do want. I took that sketch and created a cut up to the vertex at the top of the bend. This leaves me with the actual flange shape that I'm like looking for. Next, I use my hole wizard to create my clearance hole. Pretty simple. So why should we do something different? Well, let's take a look at our other method. Starting with the basic features, I'm ready to go ahead and add my edge flange. I'll go to my sheet metal tab, choose the edge flange command, and select that edge. Now I can click the approximate direction that I'd like this to go. I'll even go ahead and dial in the flange length I'm looking for. However, before I hit OK, I want to go ahead and utilize this Edit Flange Profile option. When I select that, you'll see that I'm now in a sketch mode and controlling the actual sketch that creates this edge flange. If I look straight onto this part, you can see I have a basic rectangle. If I grab the endpoints, I can actually control the overall size of this rectangle to reduce it down to a partial size edge flange. In this case, I want to go ahead and control the overall width of my flange to be one inch, and I'd like it to only be half an inch away from the origin, therefore centering it about the origin. Now down here on this end, I want to make sure I add that radius at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in my arc. Make sure that my arc is tangent with both sides. And then I want to go ahead and replace this line with my arc. And I can do that just by converting the straight line to a construction line. You may have this profile sketch pop up on your screen. Mine popped up on a second monitor, but this is telling me right now that the sketch that I've created is valid. For these edge flanges, you just need to have a closed contour. You can actually do contours within contours. So for that, I can actually go ahead and draw in the hole that I would have done with the hole wizard right here into my edge flange. The last thing I need is an overall size, so I'm going to go from my top edge to my arc and make sure I drop that to the correct 3.5 inches. Now my sketch is complete and I can go ahead and hit finish. Now you see I'm left with that custom shaped edge flange that has my design completely incorporated. I'll go ahead and make sure that that edge flange starts with the bend outside the edge. And there's our completed edge flange, this time done with a single edge flange command, no cuts and no hole wizard com commands. Much faster to actually model. Some of you might be thinking, okay, well, I could do the same thing with my cut and incorporate the hole right into the cut rather than having to use the hole wizard feature. You are correct. You can go ahead and incorporate the hole into your sketch and omit the hole wizard feature, therefore saving yourself one step. But you still have the extra step of this cut extrude. Maybe it's a quick step for you to do, but ultimately, it's not just about the design time, it's also about the rebuild time. 
If I take a look at my Evaluate tab and go to my Performance Evaluation, I can see that that Cut Extrude alone is taking up 50% of the actual rebuild time for this model. That's 0.17 seconds every time I rebuild this. Sure, that's not very much, but if I have a thousand of these parts in an overall assembly, where I've got more than one of these unique shaped flanges on the part, that time is going to add up very quickly. If we close this down and take a look at the one where I just modified that edge flange, we can see it's just the edge flange 3 taking up 22% of the time and reducing my overall build time considerably. The models that you end up with will be identical. They'll both flatten correctly. And they're both completely valid designs. However, as you can see, by using the edit flange profile command instead of completing cuts after you've created the edge flange, you save time in design and time and rebuild when you use this model. Today we took a look at the difference between doing an edge flange and cuts versus the edit flange profile command. Thanks for watching.